Um, hello, so today we are going to do problems from this week's weekly contest, weekly contest 405. The second problem is generate binary strings without adjacent zeros. So basically we have a number n um, and we have a binary string x is called valid if all the substrings of x that of length 2 have at least one value 1. So you can't have basically zero zero that's um, that's pretty much it Th that's pretty much what it means because if you have this then you have one with length two that doesn't have value one binary has only zero and one um, and the goal of the problem is to return all various strings of this length that don't contain this right so for example with three well we could have zero one zero zero one one all of these um, but we can't have like one zero zero. You can't have maybe um, zero zero one, right? Those are not valid. Okay. Um, so we will. Ju we want to just return the actual strings that are valid. Um, and if you did look at the um, constraint here, it's up to eighteen. So this tells you we could actually just just generate them using something like backtracking and just make sure that we don't get consecutive zeros two consecutive zeros pretty much um, so to do that well let's just have generate uh, function starts at zero as index and initially it's empty the the string we're trying to generate right and then we can just do a recursive call here so uh, we get the index we get the value so far um, and for backtracking we have we need to have our termination condition um, and then we need to have our recursion and usually with the recursion it's either it's the choices we have right so what choices we have well this is helpful because it's binary so it's either zero or one or one so add zero that's the first condition the second condition is add one. Uh, sorry this is choice one um, and then we have choice two which is to add binary one okay now this here has a constra constraint, right? Because you can't have zero, zero. And so um, the constraint here is we can add zero only, um, only if last character, uh, last, um, um, let's call it character, is not zero. Because if the last character, let's say we have a binary string and the last character is um, zero, then you can't add another zero because then you have two zeros and we violated the condition. We can only add a zero if there was a one here. Okay? So we can add only, so this basically means only if um, so far the last value is equal to one. Or if it's empty. Because if it's empty, we can start with zero because if you start with zero, as long as you add one afterwards, that's fine, right? Um, but for one, you can add it anywhere. You can add it if you have a one, you can still add one. If you had a zero, you can add one. So there is no, no problem with adding one. No constraint here, okay? Um, okay, so let's just do that. So now if we want to generate, each time we generate, we want to increment the index because we just filled that position, right? Um, um, and then for what to add, well, it's easy. We are adding a zero. And then here we are adding a one, but we need to apply the condition. What's the condition? Condition is either so far it's empty, so we can do that with this, or the last value is not zero, which is one, right? Only in that case that we can add it. But this one, no condition. Uh, but we still need to, remember each of these will return to us a list. So we need to concatenate the list somehow. So we let's just have a list and then add to that list from this generate and add and then return the result at the end, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, what is the termination condition? Well, if we fill all positions each time, so once we reach n, um, remember the binary string length is n. Um, and so if we reach n, what should we return? Well, we should return the string that we constructed, but we want to return it as a list just so that we can concatenate like this okay um, and that should be it so if we run this we can submit and it passes 
So pretty straightforward implementation of backtracking here. You just generate uh, and then generate the second one. Um, okay, now, now what's the time complexity for this solution? Now for these recursive functions, we just need to know how many branches we make each time. And you can see here there is one and there is a second one at most. And how, for how many times does it run? Well, index each time gets incremented by one. So it's, oh, it's n times. And so two branches n times, that means two to the power of n time complexity. Okay? Now in terms of space complexity, we have again a recursion that runs n times at most, right? n times, of course, like um, uh, n times for each branch. So the depth of our tree here is going to be n because this one, this branch will go all the way at most n times because each time we increment the index until it reaches n. Same thing here. So the depth is at most n for this recursive call. So that means our call stack will have at most n calls to this function at once. Because after, remember, after we finish calling these, we'll just keep popping from the stack until we get to the beginning and then start calling this, right? So space complexity is actually O of n. Um, and this passes because n is 18, so it's not too big. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. It's a pretty simple problem. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.